Welcome back to the Final Shot Podcast. Today, the podcast is brought to you by Onnit. If you're not on it, get on it at onnit.com forward slash TFS podcast and save 10% on your purchase. Uh, check them out. And if you guys want all the links to all the sponsors and the promo codes, go to the link tree. It's link tree forward slash the Final Shot Podcast. Click the link, it'll take you right to the webpage. You get the discount right away. And uh, it saves me from rambling on for 25 minutes about fucking shit you can get for free. Uh, guys, today, my guest, if you're on YouTube, you can see him. If you're not, it's the king of Cape Breton. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Rizicki. How's it going, buddy? Great. Thanks for having me on again. Excited to be on the podcast. My favorite podcast of all time. It's always a pleasure having you on. We get on pretty well, so <laughs> there's always something to talk about. Um, yeah. yeah. Big fight, September 11th. This is going to be a step up again for you in competition. Yeah, I, I feel it's uh, I feel it's not honestly not even a step up. I think that this is it. Like now I'm at that level, in my opinion. Because if you if you look at his record and his resume, I mean he's hung in there and beaten some top guys. So this is it. Here's the, this is the top level. I'm I'm pulling up this guy's box rec right now. So for the for, for folks that don't want to go and do the research on this fella, um, his name is Vasil Dukar. Uh, he's nine four and one. So when you look at the numbers, you say, "Oh, fucking Ryan's got he's thirteen and zero now." Another another guy he might steamroll, and but you got to go through his box track because it's this is a big step up in competition. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's uh, you know, the, put it this way: the winner is going to go on to potentially knocking at a world title door or potentially a world title. If one goes, you know what I mean? So. So this guy is ranked, it says right now on Boxer, he's like 39 in the world, and I believe you're 43. Yeah, they pushed me way back. They, they fucked me. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I was 17, and then they, they updated the rankings, and it's like, boom. I was like, oh, shit. So how does that happen, then? Is it just, It's a numbers game with Boxer, right? I believe. Like, I, I don't really know. I honestly, like, I don't know. Because you just fought a guy, a world class fella that was fighting at heavyweight and came came to cruiserweight. That's right, yeah. And he came in to fight a heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know how them scales got him down two hundred pounds, <laughs> but he was a big guy. <laughs> he was he was fucking tall, man. Six five, yeah. Jeez. My six one and a half. Is that what they have? They have you on box truck as six three. Yeah, um, six one and a half. <laughs> little box <laughs> racks, you're full of shit <laughs> yeah they they're all they're they're full of shit with everything well at least they got your promoter right dan otter that's uh, that's <laughs> ri that's written down properly on there um so how did this fight come dan just brought it to you you don't give a flying fuck about the name you just said yes let's go that's it 100 percent. so are you you're bouncing all these names obviously off of your coaches and stuff like that though right nope no, he, he runs it through my coach and basically, so from what I gather, like I don't, you know, I do my job. My job is to train. My job is to fight. So like, of course they, they run names by me, but uh, my promoter's going to get mad at me. But the truth is when he gives me a name, I don't look at him. I just say, I give, I wait 10 minutes. Then I'm like, yep. I don't <laughs> even watch the guys <laughs> because like, I don't care. Like win, lose, draw nothing you know so you're one of the we got the guys i would call a promoter's nightmare 
because they call you up and they say, oh, Anthony Joshua wants to fight 10 grand. Yeah, okay, cool, man. Let's go. Yeah, 100%. Which, realistically, when you look at that as a as a business-wise fight, that probably isn't the best. Like, we want at least 500 grand. Yeah, well, that's 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 where uh, that's where they do their job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. I would recommend any promoter to maybe contact Stevie first. <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, go but I guess I guess so. So what Stevie's told me in the gym and like and my promoters told me that they had a hell of a time getting an opponent, a hell of a time. Apparently, they went through every single guy from one to ten in the states. Everybody said no. No, that that I'm just I'm just repeating what I heard. Good. Like, and I, I'm not, and you know yourself. Like, I don't know if it's the fighters saying no or if it's who's handled them, who handling them saying no. Because, you know, like I can't see a fighter being like, no, I don't want to fight a, another fighter. No, you know, I can't see that. So, I think it's I think it's who's handling them. They're they're looking at me as as a kind of like a lose lose. They beat me. They beat who? They beat some Canadian guy. They lose to me. You know, and 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 it's a major risk to fight me. So it's getting tough to get opponents. Well, ninety percent of the time, when you get those no's, it's going to be from their handler, and it's just a business, a business thing with them. They they look at it, they say, okay, well, this is a thankless fight because let's say we do beat them. In the grand scheme of things, does it matter? Not right now, Not, but maybe in it's just a beat a record. But but in, as far as I got a name in Canada, but as far as the boxing world goes, like I got a little name, but not not I'm not no Lawrence O'Coley or yeah or a Bill Smith or something, you know. It's a thankless fight because there's a ninety percent chance you're going to clip one of these good dudes and put them down. Uh, well, I mean, on paper, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, but I know is you know anything can happen in a fight, but but I get it. It's 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 a dangerous fight for for anybody. Well, I've been really pushing for Jake Paul to fight you, but uh, I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. No, I, I think uh, I think he's going to continue to fight MMA guys who are not great strikers. Tyron Woodley, though, that's 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 a pretty decent decent striker, but a lot smaller than him. Yeah, and not used to getting hit by a two hundred and fifteen pound. No, uh, yeah, you know. it, it's a it's a it's a very different thing. But I'd rather you not have a homicide on your record as well. So it will just maybe uh, against, if it was against him, I think a lot of people would be happy. <laughs> Probably would be, but yeah. Realistically, as a Canadian guy, you're going to go through the hard way all the way up to the very top. Just like it, just like I started, and that's 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 the only road. Yeah, that... and that's the best way to do it, though. At the end of the day, do you want it easy? No, like when, like when I turned pro, I, I'm sure, well, some people know, some people don't, but I turned pro as an opponent and, and I had my first seven fights. They were all 50, like I, I was never a prospect. I was never supposed to be the undefeated guy. Like I came into the pros an amateur record of 10 wins, 11 losses. I thought it was 11 wins, 10 losses, but I looked into it. It was actually, I actually had more losses than I had wins oh, and I did and, all my all my national fights I got I lost I never fought internationally so you got to think like when I turned professional like who was I it was just just some guy right yeah so like the fact that I'm undefeated now is just kind of mind blowing to me a little bit <laughs> but like I, like I say to everybody amateur boxing is so much different than professional boxing same premise different style it really is it it really is it's like uh, it's like comparing sparring to a street fight. Yeah, you but know? you're also at the very wrong, like a very, very wrong weight class. Yeah, like I, I was on the scale two days ago after I trained, after like three meals, hydrated, and I was one ninety. <laughs> yeah, oh my I'm like Jesus. And he's like, these light heavyweights are probably bigger than me. I would guess so. Some of those guys are cutting twenty pounds to hit that mark. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I think I sparred. Who was it? There was a guy from Quebec I sparred in the summer. I went there to, uh, in his camp. He fought Joe Smith Jr. Okay. Um, Elider Alvarez. Yeah, yeah. Light heavyweight, and like I was in the ring, and I'm like, "Geez, this guy's bigger than me," and yeah. he's fighting 175. He's fucking good too. 
yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, real good. Um, so when you look at this guy on paper, what what problems do you think that he poses for you? I I see him. I mean, you could you could cur- you could disagree, or a lot of people could disagree, but in my mind right now, I see myself fighting myself with him. I see him like I watch his fights, and and when he gets cracked, he comes back. He like he doesn't he doesn't shell up. You know what I mean? So like when he gets hit, he fights back. It's it's proven. And not only that, but he fought like he fought some big punchers, and yeah. nobody's put a dent in him. I mean, he's been down, but got up with no troubles and fought back and never really looked like he's been close to being stopped. So, like, yeah, he's you got, know. Oh, he's got one TKO on his record. Two, two, sorry. Two TKOs. Two TKOs. Yeah, so. Two, two key TKO wins or? Uh, yeah, they are wins, my bad. They're three TKO wins. Every loss is unanimous decision. No, he's got, he's eight, eight wins, or nine wins, eight knockouts, four losses. All by decisions. Oh, I got to scroll down farther on the fucking thing. I'm computer stupid sometimes. (laughs) You got the right guy there? (laughs) It's the right guy, yeah. He's got everything's almost a TKO for a win, except for for one. And all of them unanimous decision losses and one draw. Which, and some of his losses were like, it was in hometowns, and he probably should have got it. Yeah. And, you know, and against, like, world-class guys. And you got another guy from... From out of town too, Czech Republic. Yeah, actually, we have a similar opponent too. Who? Uh, the last time actually I fought at Senator Hunter, I fought a guy named Vladimir Reznicek from Czech Republic. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, and they had a draw. That's the draw. That was back yeah, in 2018. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you don't even need. I don't even need to have this box rack up. You know everything that's going on. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know my my history. <laughs> I thought I was showing up fucking prepared today, but uh, I already fucked it up, so I'm just gonna shut this damn computer down because you already know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he uh, he fought Reznicek, so that would have been my second last fight, and they fought for the Czech championship, the Czech title. Okay, and it was, and it ended up being a draw, I believe. So I have watched a few of his fights. Um, when he does get hit, he does come forward. And yeah, yeah, for sure. He's he's a hammerhead, but I think that's going to be a mistake. <laughs> I don't know if he's fought anybody that hits as hard as you. Uh, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. I, I'm not the best cruiserweight in the world. People can disagree with me, but if you look at look at the cruiserweights, there's so much more talent. There's so much more skill and size. But as far as like one punch power i don't think that th- there's anyone who can hit harder than me well I, I can compare it to cars a little bit like you get these honda civics that are out there that they're real fast off the line and they got a good shot like you give them 150 shot of nitrous and they'll and they'll do 10 seconds and a quarter mile right but then yeah. you, you get yourself a big block chevy or 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 a mopar dodge and you get a 440 in that cocksucker you don't need any nitrous it's just pure horsepower no, that's right. And that's what you got. It's just pure, unadulterated horsepower. Yeah, it, it doesn't uh, like it. That doesn't make sense for my for my size and my weight and my build, my power. It doesn't make any sense. It's like my coach will tell you, he's he's. I feel I don't well. Like, yeah, I feel a little bad. Like he's literally broken. Like his body's broken just from holding pads. <laughs> he's a big he dude has- too. And he's a big, big man. He's a lot bigger than me. So, like, just just from holding pads since we started training together, like, he's he's got a, he's full of injuries. You know. After watching some of your your pad sessions, I think it's got a lot to do with the way you throw your punches too. You don't throw your punches like the everyday boxer. You've got that tucked in elbow on the hooks where every ounce of your body weight's going in behind that shot. Uh, we've also talked about bone density and tendons, tendon size and stuff like that in previous podcasts. If you guys haven't listened to it, you should probably go back and listen to the last one. But I think that's got a lot to do with it is the way you're throwing your punches. It could be for sure. Um, like the, like when I was uh, when I first started into boxing, I just like lucky enough, I, I ended up having a, a teacher 
I call him a teacher, not a coach, but a teacher. Um, his name is Rudy Plitchy, 80, he'd be 87 years old now. So when I first started at the, at this amateur club, it was called Sydney boxing club. And that's where I started. And he was coming in there the odd time. And he actually, he's a, he was a cut man and he worked corners like massive fights. He had, it, over the years, he had 16 different Canadian champions under his wing that he trained. And he was taught to train fighters by Charlie Goldman, okay. who was Rocky Marciano's head coach. And he explained to me from the first the first time I ever started to learn how to throw punches, he explained to me how to keep the elbows in and how to turn the body. And like he, he, he started to explain to me, like, this is how Rocky Marciano punched. This is how Joe Lewis punched. So I, I would start studying these guys when I was like 15, 16 years old. And I, that was when I got obsessed with it, obsessed with watching old school fighters, Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, Ray Robinson, all these guys. And like, and I would, only thing I would pay attention to was the position of their arms, position of their feet and the way that they were turning their bodies. And I would just, I would go into this, to the garage that my dad had set up for me with a heavy bag. Mm -hmm. And I'd be in that, I'd be in that garage for literally, I'm not exaggerating, eight to 10 hours hitting the bag, Jesus. trying to trying to perfect the way I punched. And I didn't know nothing about head movement. I didn't know nothing about a jab. I didn't know nothing about, you know, like boxing, ring IQ, things like that. The only thing I was concerned about is breaking the heavy bag and, and generating as much power as I could to punch like Rocky Marciano. That's that's all that mattered to me. <laughs> hitting, hitting as hard as possible and emulating somebody that you looked up to as an idol at that. Uh, obviously today. Still, I, I still do the same thing. Uh, of course, there's, there's there's things added to the game, and and Steve he's he's bringing in like like n not necessarily new things, but he's helping refine the things that need to be refined to make my style the best it can be. But I, but I'll never ever abandon those roots I was taught to punch like the old school guys. Okay. And I, I think that that definitely plays a big role in that that power. Oh, that brings me to an interesting post that you posted either uh, yesterday or today, and it was uh, about beliefs. So some people believe in God, and you respect that, and some people believe in other stuff or whatever it is. But you believe somewhat in reincarnation. Yeah, like I, I believe that. Not like you, you, your everything gets reincarnated, but I believe like bits and pieces. Like when you die, they, you, whatever you you are, you get scattered to the universe and then when another life comes into the universe it might pick up bits and pieces this is just my crazy belief and i'm sure lots of people are like well that's stupid but, but i i believe it right <laughs> and i i do believe that there's part of jack dempsey that i got that picked up somehow got picked up me because when i saw him fight for the first time when i was 14 years old it was when i first started learning about boxing and i, I got onto youtube and somehow the first video I come across was Dempsey versus Willard, 1919 for the heavyweight world title. And as soon as I seen Jack Dempsey fight, it was almost like um, deja vu. Okay. It was like I was watching myself or something. It was weird, really hard to explain. And ever since then, like, you see, I cut my hair like Jack Dempsey when I go into <laughs> fights. I always talk about him. Um, like, the, the grimace on my face when I punch, it's, it's, if you look at the old pictures of him fighting and then look at pictures of me, it's like, it's like the same person. Well, there's a lot of still photos that you can pull up that you can put side by side, and they're almost exact replicas, except you have a shitload of tattoos. That's the only difference. Yeah. That's the, it's, very, it's very strange. And like like I said, people can call me crazy. That's fine. I am. But, like, I do believe that. Well, I think manifestation is a very important thing, whether it is true or it isn't true or whether somebody believes what you believe or don't believe. I think that... If you believe it in your mind, that that's exactly what it is. That's that's it. It's the I don't know where it starts with a P placebo effect or something. Like yep. you take a pill that tells you something's it. If you believe it, who can tell you different? Oh, no, they can't. And everybody needs something to believe in in life, whether it's God or you want to believe in the fucking curb over there. It doesn't matter. It, as, it doesn't matter. As long as you believe it and that's what gets you through the day, that's it. Yeah, that's that's when I get in the ring and like, it's funny because like I get in the ring and I'm looking at my opponents and like, I put clips up of like stare downs and stuff before fights and like, I, I in my mind I think that they're looking at Jack Dempsey. You couldn't tell me that they're looking at tattooed up 
Ryan Rizicki. <laughs> like they, in my in my mind, they're looking at Jack Dempsey. I don't even but obviously they're not, but at that given moment, like that's what it is. Well, whatever you're doing is fucking working. Yeah, like don't don't fix what's not broken or whatever. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's it. That's the same. <laughs> so realistically it's working for you you've got 13 wins 13 ko's perfect yeah. record and uh there's not a lot of people on the planet that can say that no that's right and like but i mean i don't think too much about the record obviously like i'm gonna lose eventually so i don't get too high on it i don't you know and if i lost i wouldn't get too low on it like it's it's yeah. fighting you win some you lose some but you know, that's just part of the game. Well, you just you strike me as the kind of guy that doesn't really give a fuck. I really don't. Like, if you see me get knocked out, like, I would be crying in the dressing room. I'd literally get up and be like, fuck, you got me with a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and if I knock them out, it's like, it's nice shot. <laughs> I got a ton of friends that are fighters, and I, if they lose, I always message them and say, hey, are you all right? Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't do that to you. No, because you know I'd be like, oh, he's fine. You probably tell me to go fuck myself. <laughs> find it before <laughs> finding another one. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't. It literally wouldn't even bother me. I don't think it bug you too much. But... I'd probably laugh with the haters. Like, fuck, I got knocked right out. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you get a lot of hate on social media? Not so much anymore. Do you Not used so to? Much. Oh yeah, I used to. I still do, but like. Maybe it's because I don't I don't read it. I don't know. Maybe I get all kinds. I just don't. I just kind of just read the good stuff. So, um, when we put a podcast out on YouTube, like you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I always get excited when I get a thumbs down. Yeah, you know you're doing something right. <laughs> I know. I, either one, I piss somebody off, or my guest pissed somebody off, or somebody just really doesn't like me. It, it gets me off for some reason. I don't know why. I guess. The, the way I see it is, like, I used to, like, at one time, I used to take that shit right to heart and stuff. Yeah. Until I started thinking about it, I'm like, I, I like, it's not like I hide. I go in public, and I, and I you know, I, I'm out there all the time and shopping or out getting groceries and stuff in Cape Breton and Sydney or wherever. And, like, I started thinking about it. Not one time, not, not once has anybody ever come up to me and said anything negative. You know, or and then before I used to go on on Facebook or whatever and, and read all these negative comments and like take it to heart. But if it's not in the real world, then it's not real. Oh well, yeah, social media is not real. It's not. That's not. That's not real life. So why does it matter? <laughs> I, I called the guy out a little while ago, and uh, he called me a coward, and then just didn't accept. And I was like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I said I wanted to fight you, but I'm a coward. So how's that work? It doesn't. I, I figured it was I was dealing with somebody that was lower on the IQ scale, so I just left it alone. I was like, you know what, fuck. That's that's just yeah. That that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think, but yeah, it doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. Um, we got something very interesting that's going to happen in Canada on September 20th. Um, Justin Trudeau has called a snap election. I don't know if you're a political guy, but I'm sure you got a few thoughts on how this country is doing right now and, and the amount of crap with these COVID passports and COVID shots and fucking all this crap. Uh, I don't I don't pay attention to nothing. Nothing. Like I, I know who Justin Trudeau is. He's our fucking our version of a president, or yeah. prime minister. And I know a lot of people don't like him. And that's all I know. <laughs> so, uh, do you, have you been have you been vaccinated for for the COVID? Yeah, double because that? I had because I had to so I could fight. But yeah. like, I know there's a big there's a big uproar on some people want to get vaccinated and some people don't. And like, everyone's got their view on it, I guess. My view is they shot me up with needles when I was a, with a baby. They shot me up with needles when I was in elementary school and I'm still, I'm still alive. I got fucking hit in the head with 
about everything you could get hit in the head with, hit by cars, ran over, I'm still alive. If I stick me with a little needle with a little shot of something, and I don't think that's going to kill me. Did you get sick from it or no? Oh, yeah, I got sick from it. Did you? But, but fuck, I get sick if I run out in the cold and, and uh, get a sweat on and stay out in the, in the cold too long. I get sick too. <laughs> I just don't think too much about that stuff. So I don't know. <laughs> well, a lot of people are in an uproar about it because us as human beings, we don't like to be told what to do a lot. So, like, the, somebody says to you, hey, Ryan. You have to have this vaccine and this passport thing to go into that restaurant over there. I'm not down with that. As a as a human, I don't want to. I, we should have the freedom of choice. Yeah, that 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 sounds kind of like the Holocaust or some shit. Yeah, it's almost like we're being told what to do. Whether they're going to shoot us up with a microchip or a tracking device or some shit, who knows what they're putting in you? Realistically, I don't really care. I ain't hard to find. Yeah, no, that's right. But we should have freedom of choice in this country, and we should have the option to say, hey, I don't want to wear a mask, or I don't want to get that shot. And if I want to take that risk as a human being, I take that risk. Yeah, that that I agree with. So what's what did what you say happened on September 20th with so Justin Trudeau? Justin Trudeau got reelected in two, I believe it was two years ago. Um, usually elections don't happen, in a, they happen in a four-year span. So he's called a snap election. So when he won the last election, he won a minority government, which means he solely can't make the decisions for what happens in our country. It has to go through and, and get voted on by the other parties. Okay. So what he wants at this point is to call this snap election with a very short amount of time to campaign so that he can win majority government, so that he can make all the decisions. And what's what's his – what does he want? What, what's, what's he saying? Like, he what does want, he want? The... Basically, he wants mandatory vaccines, COVID passports, and if you don't have the vaccines and the passport, you can't go do shit. So what are the odds of that happening? pretty damn good really yeah so the way the uh, the elections work is we can vote as as the citizens of of canada we can have the citizens vote which justin trudeau did not win last time but he won the congressional votes which was so ontario and quebec between them they have 220 votes and between the western western canada is we have like 160 so if Ontario and Quebec solely vote for Justin Trudeau and he gets all 220 votes, he automatically wins. So basically he's and, – and and do you think that they're going to vote for him? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's winning. He's probably going to win, yeah, not unless we have some nasty dude that comes out and everybody just falls in love with him. So we, we need almost like a – I hate to say it, but – like a Donald Trump kind of character, kind of we come need, out and we need Donald Trump. We need Kevin O'Leary. That's who we need. The guy from Dragons or Dragons Den. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a rich dude in Canada that's super smart. But we need a we need a, a Donald Trump type to come in, like uh, somebody who's a celebrity or has a giant name. Um, some big balls <laughs> yeah like the rock yeah. was born in canada if dwayne johnson would just come back to canada and run for prime minister he would win or lennox lewis or something lennox lewis would be a good candidate former world champion retired on top yeah see the world seems to be getting a little crazy like i don't i'm not following media much so the only time i log on to the internet is to watch joe lewis or jack dempsey or something but like <laughs> i'm in my own world <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's, there's too much going on inside my own head to worry about what's going outside my own head. So I tried to shut it off for a while. Like on the, we have a 35 minute drive into work in the morning. My wife and I. So we listen to the radio and we kind of get the news and what's going on here, the COVID numbers and what we can and can't do and all that kind of shit, which is not something I want to do on a daily basis because it's actually kind of a downer. But. You kind of need to know it when you have to navigate the system to provide for your family. Mm -hmm. So when they come and they say, hey, man, you got to have two vaccines to go to work and make money. 
my big ass has to get into the doctor and get two vaccines so I can go out and make money and put food on the table for my kids. Well, that's exactly why I got the two vaccines. You have to work. If I didn't get, if I didn't get them, I can't fight. If I can't fight, well, that that's my income. So, so initially, you and I both can't work unless we get stabbed with something we don't know what it is. Yeah. Is that fair? No. No. No, I'm pissed about it. <laughs> I'm not happy either, man. The The first no, one I, I got, I, I got sick. The second one I didn't get anything from. It didn't bug me at all. But it wasn't my first thing that I wanted to do. I hate getting fucking needles. I don't like it. So the mine was the opposite. The first one didn't bother me. The second one, like I couldn't even train. I'm in training camp and I couldn't, really? I couldn't even get out of bed. I was done. That was it. Like how, you could have hit me in the head and knocked me out with a fucking pool noodle. How long did that last? Sixteen hours, I think. Wow. So yeah, I have yeah. a I have a friend that owns USG Canada. Howie, his dad got the shot. He was oh, out sponsored for... sponsored a car. Howie. Yeah, yeah sponsored a car. We need him. Uh, yeah. But his dad got the shot, and he couldn't walk for like two months. Well, two months. Yeah, yeah, the, it gave him vertigo somehow. It was affect, yeah, it's affecting different people differently. This is what I'm hearing. So, could you imagine being laid up by a mandatory shot for two months? No, it's it's, it's it seems to be getting a little crazy. Like I said, I'm I'm not really paying much attention to it, but what you're saying now, it's yeah, this seems a little nuts, and I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I might be off on a little bit of it. I'm, I don't trust me, guys, because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> but from what I what I hear on the radio and what I would call intelligent people, I'm like we're in we're in trouble, a lot of trouble. Uh, fuck, we're gonna die anyway. So at some point, yeah. But don't don't vote for Justin <laughs> Trudeau on September twentieth. Please vote for anybody else. Not by the sounds of that. <laughs> um, so I don't know nothing about him, but now I don't like him. Yeah, you you, you can't. I'm on I'm on speed train too now, just from your. Just from your spiel. Right. This this guy is a drama teacher that he taught high school drama and they, somebody thought it was a good idea for him to run our country. Hmm. Very interesting, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're at a fun time of the year for other than boxing, hunting season's right around the corner. Hunting season, fight baby all in the run of a month so are you you're gonna get out there this year and get some hunting in i'm gonna get out there and get some hunting in i don't care this <laughs> is happening this year you got <laughs> didn't it happen it. last year it's yeah. happening this year so you've got the you got the rifles all dialed in you're ready to rock yeah i got one rifle this year that's all i'm using and i'm gonna fill the freezers hopefully before the baby comes so I got the the greatest draw of all time in Saskatchewan. I got drawn for elk this year. And that's that's probably, I'm going to guess, that's almost like getting drawn for moose in Cape Breton. Probably rare. It's very rare. And uh, I've been waiting. I've been putting in for five years. And I got a, it's a specialty tag for for elk this year. So I didn't get the actual, like, draw, draw. I got a specialty draw, which is, fuck, I'm excited. What's that? What's what's the difference? So basically, um, every, only every once in a while you get to go out and you get to take the females. Oh, so you you can shoot male or female? Yeah, I can do whatever I want, and they only go to people usually that fill their tags. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a pat on the back for doing some wildlife management. And to the vegans out there, I know you guys aren't going to like that, but I don't really give a shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um they're gonna say so are you gonna how long how long is the elk season last so i have uh from october 15th to the 31st and then i yeah. have from november 9th to the 19th are you gonna wait on bull or are you gonna take the first one you see um i don't know it depends yeah if a if a big dry female walks out in front of me i'm probably gonna down that thing you're just looking at a, how much meat, you know what I mean? Like, how could you, how would you let that walk? 
I can't. I can't let it walk. It, realistically, I'm not a. I'm not a horn hunter. If you if you walk out in front of me and you're a good size, I'll put you down. Yeah, like it's cool to have the horns and stuff. But what if that doesn't happen and then you miss your chance and you don't get the freezer full of meat? You know. The way I look at it is, I, I'm 38 years old. I'm probably gonna hunt until I'm dead. Yeah. So realistically i have a very long time to go out and get something absolutely enormous but i have three other mouths in my house that i need to put the meat on the table for yeah and what are you getting what are you getting off let's say a full-size elk i, I don't we don't have elk in Nova scotia so um they usually weigh in about 1900 pounds so you're getting a thousand pounds of meat right around there yep yeah well, and, and some of the best meat. I just ate elk recently for the first time. My last training camp. Yep. And I I I put it. Deer is my favorite. Whitetail. That's what I grew up on. That's what my body loves. Like, I just got a fucking sweet tooth for deer meat. But I I thought that that elk was a little better than moose meat. Elk is what they usually call the Cadillac, and then it's moose and deer. I do enjoy deer meat myself. It's I, I eat it all year. I said, yeah, there's something about it. And, like, I know a lot of, like, you know yourself, I know myself. It's, like, you know how to butcher it probably to take that wild game, take, taste out headshots, cut the throat, yep. get the blood out of the meat, let it hang probably, let it cool probably. And you can eliminate that wild game taste. And then, you know, how you cook it, salt, blah, yep. blah, blah. But, like, for me, I want it to taste as wild <laughs> as I can fucking have it. It's kind of you nice. Know? It's nice, though, right? I like it. Yeah, me too. Like it, I like eat no one that I'm eating deer meat. Yeah, if you if you cut into like deer has a distinctly different uh, color than everything else. Same with elk. Elk is almost purple, and then moose has its own color too. But if you put up a, like a deer backstrap against a, a T bone steak, like a, mm-hmm. a beef steak, they're very different in color and. Very different. Yeah. You can almost tell by looking at it which one's healthier for you. Oh yeah, like it's it's it's, it's unbelievable the the difference. So like when I'm in camp here now, I mean I got no choice. I'm I don't have deer meat, so I'm eating grass fed beef. I'm eating like the the best shit I can get from the grocery store. Yeah, and I notice my my body's recovering. Like I'm training hard and I'm eating lots of meat. My body's recovering, but when I'm home, let's say I go and I I run. 10 miles, 15 rounds in the bag, completely, like, just ruin my body. I can go home, cook up as much deer meat as I can eat, eat that, sleep, wake up. It's almost like I'm just, I, like, I did nothing. Exactly. It, it, there's nothing nothing that recovers you better than wild game. There's No, there's really not. Whatever it is about the, I know that deer meat has a much higher omega um Three three nines or what's that? What's the the, the vitamin that people take for their joints? That's omega six three nine. Yep. Deer is super high in that. A lot of people don't realize because it's so low in fat. You wouldn't think that it'd be high in that, but it's actually got a higher content of that than beef does by like a massive amount. Higher in iron, higher in protein, higher in everything. It's super lean, leaner than chicken. Yeah, and then you're not, and plus you're not eating all those extra calories for, with the fat, right? Yeah. Yeah, if if there's guys out there that are on the fence about hunting, I I suggest you go and try it at least once. Yeah, and and if and if you're one of those guys who, or or girls that are like, oh the poor deer, fucking that's so wrong, shooting them deer, let me eat my my burger from Burger King, like go fuck yourself, <laughs> you're an idiot, you're an idiot. <laughs> ah, it, they're they're too they're too so it's so different. Like you go there, you don't even know what the fuck's in that meat. No, and the, and the animal that you're eating, that you're contributing to, literally spent its whole life on a in a conveyor, or what do you call it, like on a conveyor belt. Yeah. It, it never had a chance to live its life. And then it gets its throat slit while it's alive. So it can bleed out. And then and then it's 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 uh, processed and stuff. Like it's the most brutal thing you could ever do. And you and every time you eat that meat that you, you're contributing to, you're contributing to that. Yeah. But it's wrong for us to go into the woods, take an animal who lived an awesome life. We practice our aim. We know we can we can make one shot kills. Yeah. So the animal that doesn't suffer, nothing gets wasted, and and we, we eat it and we, we make sure it was killed humanely. 
but that's fucking wrong. Those people are just idiots. And, and if you want to be a vegan and, and you sit there and you yap off about, oh, the animals, do you have any idea how those those vegetables are harvested? <laughs> There's more blood on your vegetables than there is on my 300 wood mag. Listen, it, it, and at the end of the day, it's like, are you out there in the woods trying to stop hunters? If you're exactly. not, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, you know? What, what a lot of people got to realize, too, is that like when you get drawn for moose or I get drawn for elk, these are lucky things that happen because these animals are managed like the wildlife is managed. And the only reason these tags are given out is because X amount of these animals need to be taken this year so that they don't get wasting disease or they don't get, or they don't overpopulate an area and, and they get sick or, or they get hit by cars and shit like that. Yeah. It's you're, you're literally, you're managing the herd. Exactly. You know? And that's the way I said, that's the, that's the goal with my uncle one time. He said, the. Because he he was a he's a big time uh, poacher, <laughs> like back in the day. This is before, right? And anyways, he used to shoot. Well, but nothing wasted. We yeah. eat everything, right? And uh, some would say to him, "Like, what are you doing, killing all those deer for?" And he'd be like, "He'd get mad. Well, they're only going to get hit in the road anyway. It's true. They're only going to get killed by coyotes anyway. Yeah. You know, right. you're kind of doing them a favor." There, there's people that get called poachers, and then there's people that need to go out there and, and kill those deer to eat because they ain't got no money. Yeah, that's that's pretty much where I was at my whole life. <laughs> and I, if you got to go out and you got to take an animal, do it. Like, I'm yeah. not advocating poaching, but if you're hungry and you need to feed yourself, go make it happen. Yeah, make, make sure you, you you do it properly, though. Don't... don't uh... Don't go shooting them in the guts or shooting them in the arse or something. Like, yeah. take your time with your aim. Learn how to shoot. Learn different calibers. Understand ballistics. Understand MOA. Know how to place that bullet exactly where you want it to go, so the animal doesn't suffer. Yep. How, and then you use it, and you eat. You eat all all the animal. How's that even? How's that wrong? How's that wrong? Nothing wrong with that. But I'll just I'm going to give a little message to the guys that fancy themselves archers. And you get out there and you hunt with a bow and arrow. Make sure you're practicing your shots before. Like it, shooting a bow is a lifestyle. It's not something you pick up for a month and you go out and you think you're good at. It's fucking hard. We've had to put down animals out in the field that have arrows sticking out of their necks. We can't do nothing with that meat either because it's poison. I, I've seen it. I've, I've seen deer with, with arrows sticking out of them. Like yeah. that's that's why personally I won't bow hunt because I'm not a great bow. I'm not a good shot with a bow. So I, I would never try to, to shoot a deer with it because I know that the chances are I'm probably going to wound it. Yeah. So I don't bother. You know what I mean? And, and I don't really, right now I'm training so much. I, I don't have the time to, to, to perfect bow hunting, you know? So, it's so an, I just don't do it. It's an art form. Like you're, you're really good at uh, long distance shooting. Yeah. That's not something that you got good at overnight. No, that did, that took years and years of, of perfecting and learning. Like, and I'm still lear I'm still learning about it. I'm still, I still go to the range and I pra I'll I'll waste a hundred. What you call it waste, but I'll go and I'll shoot a hundred rounds out of my twenty two two fifty just just to practice my trigger pull, my breathing, you know, everything. There's so much that goes into those big nine hundred yard shots, like wind and the way you're squeezing your trigger and the way you breathe and. If you flinch, or if a cricket chirps over there and throws you off, the crosswinds, like you know, say that say this is this is where you're at, this is where the deer's at. Let's say that's just say that's a thousand yards. Well, the wind, a hundred yards out, the wind could be blowing this way. Three hundred yards out, the wind could be blowing this way. Yeah. Six hundred yards out, the wind could be coming this way. Like, it, yeah, like it's sometimes you got to watch the trees at each different range to see the bullet. By the time the bullet gets there, like. <laughs> understand actually where that bullet's going to hit at that range and sometimes you got to make one shot just to see where the bullet hits <laughs> and the deer's looking around like well, what the was that <laughs> i i try to stay within 300 yards i i wouldn't i don't think i'd squeeze the trigger at 900 yards i wouldn't even chance it no that's that's a long long shot long shot 500 yards i get nervous like, yeah I, I think i think the longest shot i ever made I, 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 my memory's getting bad. I don't know if it's from box or what, but I think it was 800. I think 800, I want to say. 
Fuck, that's eight football fields, man. That's far. Yeah, and that took a couple shots. I would guess so. A few shots, yeah. <laughs> I think. I could be wrong, but... Yeah. My most recent long shot was 400. And that was with a 243. It was a 11-pointer, and I got him literally right under the chin. I had a Swarovski Z3 on for that was the, the glass I was using, and I had it set up for – I was using 100 grain game head Seiko. Okay. And I had it all dialed in, so I knew exactly where the bullet was going to hit, and I had the turret on top set for the grain weight bullet I was using. Yeah. And I had a finder, so I knew I clicked. It was like he was bang on 400 yards. I just set my turret to 400 yards, put it at the white spot, boom. Done. Literally just waited two seconds. You hear that? Down he went. Like, I was like wow. Yeah. <laughs> 400 yards is far. It's right. a lot longer. Than people. Like people say, well, I made a 400 yard shot. And then, it, well, can I see where the shot was at? Yeah, buddy, that's that's about 150. It, it's very deceiving. If people think they can see a deer well at 400 yards. You have to get out binoculars. It looks like a little dot. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't have a good scope and and you know what you're doing, 400 yards, you could be hitting the barn. <laughs> yeah, just leave it. If you don't know what you're doing, just leave it. <laughs> don't even bother. Uh, chasing animals sucks too. You chase them down. You gotta. Uh, that's terrible. I've had to do it. And I, I hate to say that I've had to do it, but I've had to track them like miles and miles and miles. I, you can't leave them if you. If I leave them, I'd have fucking nightmares. It's. It, We've all, like, as a hunter, we've all been in those situations. And, like, I don't care. You could brag about you're the, you're the best shot in the world. You missed. You wounded them. We've lo- we hit them and lost them. Yep. It fucking sucks, but it happens. It's it's, it's part of the game, you know. It's, it's part of it. This is the first year I'm going to take bird hunting very seriously. What do you got there? Like, what kind of... We got pheasants, uh, sharp tail grouse, um, prairie chickens. We... We call them prairie chickens. They're just little, little, but they're they're nice eating birds. I'm gonna guess that those would be like partridge. Yeah, partridge. We got, yeah, I think they call them grouse. Yeah, there's grouse here. We got the the bigger ones. They're about this big, like pheasants. Yeah, fe- we got pheasants. Not many, but we do have pheasants. So, okay, Breton. I'm taking them very seriously this year because I shot a few last year and they're fantastic. Yeah, you, you know, we just get a bunch of them and vacuum seal them and save them. That that's yeah. that's what I do. Then you got you could eat them all winter, right? Oh, they're they're fantastic because you you yank the the breasts out of them. They're fair, they're real easy to clean too. You just get in there underneath the skin and pull everything off and yank the breasts out. Ooh, they're nice. Or you can you can step on their wings and grab them by the by the feet and yep. pull it right out. <laughs> one way to do it my grandfather oh my god he would flip if he seen me doing that <laughs> lose his mind he didn't like doesn't like that eh? Hey, no he literally probably hit me over the head with something like so he's, he's the kind of guy like like you don't waste nothing and like on a partridge like literally the legs there's like nothing on them right yeah. or, or on the wings or whatever but so when you pull the breast out that's pretty much all the meat on the bird yeah. but he'll take it he'll literally pluck pluck them he'll spend an hour just to get every last ounce of them, like oh, man. next next level, old school, man. So last year I saved all the the legs that I did uh, their air fried legs. Oh yeah, holy Christ, they were good. But they have these little weird bones in there, and they're they're almost like fish bones. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch that. <laughs> but they they'll were. Fuck you up. They'll, yeah, they'll fuck you up quick. You get one of those stuck in your throat, you're probably dead. <laughs> yeah. But they yeah. were they were fantastic. Yeah, they're real good. Well, purge. I'm going to guess the same. Probably same, similar. Yeah, same thing. Basically, yeah. they're very dark meat in the breast. Uh no. So they're the ones we got here. It's like white meat. Oh really? Yeah, white meat. But we do have. Um, they're called spruce grouse. So purge. Yeah. We call them purge. Cape Breton slang, but the real name for them is is ruffled grouse. Oh yeah, we That's got those. So we got those, and then we got spruce grouse. So they look almost identical, but the spruce grouse are, are a little bit like darker, yeah. and they got a little bit of red right here. Okay, those those are all dark meat, and then the ruffled grouse, which we call partridge, those are like white meat. Yeah, we have the ruffled grouse here. I didn't get any last year. I just got sharp tails. Okay, well, if you get a ruffled grouse, you'll see the the meat's like it looks just like chicken. Oh, fantastic! 
I, I'm excited. Yeah. I can't wait for hunting this year. I'm, it's right around the corner. Bow season opens September 1st, so I'll be out there ripping and stalking <laughs> and getting fucking weird. Yeah, I, I know that it, once, once it's a fever that you just if it's in your blood, it's in your blood. Anybody who's watching knows as soon as like September starts approaching, that's it. Yeah. Nothing else in the world matters. So good because we just ran out of deer meat. We had uh, four deer in the freezer and we went through it we ate them all i got two roasts left that i'm actually going to grind up into ground um <laughs> so we had to go out and we bought a quarter cow oh really it's, it's amazing hey like that how quick you'll go through a deer doesn't take long it really it really doesn't no like i myself personally when i was training i i swear i'm not even exaggerating yet i ate eight deer in one year Oh my Myself. god! Eight deer, it's like gone, like no waste. I ate it. even the bones. I cut them up, and like like the femur and stuff. I used to cut them up, and then I would put that in the slow cooker, and I would make like a bone broth. Yep. So and then my and then my dog would eat what was left of the bone. So literally, like nothing, nothing to waste. Eight full deer in a whole year. Yeah. That's like twelve months. Twelve months. We do the same thing with the bones. We cut them up and we make bone broth out of it. Drink it in the winter time. It's drink nice. it like tea. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's so good for you too. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, hunting season it, it's different because like, getting ready for a fight's fun. Hunting season, I get f- just fired right up. I can't wait. It's a different kind of excitement for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, for me, like fighting, fighting for me is almost like. It's a it's a, just a daily thing. Like I'll go I'll go in the gym and I'll spar and like for, for my sparring partners, it's like the fight of their life. For me, it's just like I'll talk to them the stuff now. Like you know, like you smash me in the head. I'll be like, oh, good chat, and then like talk, just talking to them in there, like yeah. very composed because I've been there so many times. It's just, but then hunting is just it's a different kind of excitement. Very. Do you see yourself getting bored with fighting at any point? Never. Never, never. get bored I, with it. I live for it, but I'm so I'm so calm about it now because I've done it so much and I've been in so many fights. I've only had 13 pro boxing fights, which is really not a lot. Yeah. But I've been in so many altercations. I've been in so much involved with so much violence throughout my life that like boxing to me is almost. Although it's super, I actually had this conversation with my coach very recently. I told him, like, the yeah, IC box is so dangerous. And, like, when I go into the ring, like, I know a lot of fighters are like, kill or be killed. Yeah. They don't, they say it, but they don't mean it. Whereas, like, I, I really do mean that. I will, I will kill someone or I will die if I have to in the ring. That's, that's the, that's the way I'm to go out. That's the way I'm to go out, you know, so be it. But, like, it's just like boxing, there's a referee there. Yeah. There's 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 a referee to stop it. The, the corner is there potentially to have mercy on you and throw the towel in. There's a doctor there that if he sees something he doesn't like, he'll stop the fight. If I get a cut that's too bad, they'll stop the fight. Well, I've, I've been in situations where there was no doctor, there was no referee, there was no coach, there was no cornerman, there was no one even there to help me where it's like, you got to fight to live, literally fight to survive. So boxing, like a boxing match, yes, it's dangerous. Yes, you can get hit, you can die, you get brain bleeds, comas, all that stuff. So it's extremely dangerous. But there is a safety there. There's a, there's, there's a little bit of a safeness to it, right? Yeah. So so maybe that's why I'm so so calm about boxing because I've seen so much worse and I've been involved in so much worse that – Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, I had Brandon Brewer on the last podcast, and I was talking to him about you a little bit, and I was, I, was, I, I really like Ryan. He, he's a super nice guy, but I think he might be a psychopath. Yeah, like we were. Well, I think anybody who, who voluntarily, you know, wants to fight, to fight people potentially yeah. to the death, there's something wrong. Like for Brandon, there's probably something a little bit psychotic about him. One hundred percent. You fought yourself in the ring. There might be something a little psychotic about you. Like, we all got just a little something, right? For sure. Yeah. But it was more of a joke than anything. But uh, I just, I, I see you as a, a a different, you're different than everybody else. There, there's, uh, I was actually just that, just hanging out with um, 
my promoters today. Uh, today was my rest day because I had a really, real long, tough grind and week in the gym. So my coach said, you know, I'll take take uh, today off. Yesterday was like a recovery day, Cairo and all that stuff. And the yeah. day was just, don't think about boxing. Don't train. Let your body recover because we got a long week ahead, right? So today I was just hanging out with them, like just, just having some dinner and stuff. And like, this is what they were saying. Like they were talking about this fight coming up and they're like, it's just, it's different. It's different. There's something different. No one knows what it is, yeah. but, and I feel it too. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. I feel comfortable with you as a person, but I know that at some point, like you can flick it and it, and you, and it's, you're going. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's almost like I can just flick it anytime. It's like a split personality almost, but you control it. But it's always there. It's there right now. Yeah. I feel it right now. I feel it 24 7, even when I sleep, like whatever it is. I call it the bruiser. It's a ring name. So the yeah. name is, it's an old three, go whatever you want to call it. But it's like, it's part of me and very comfortable with it. I actually like, well, since, I mean, uh, there's no secret, all my fucking charges and all that bullshit that, that happened, well, it'll be almost two years ago now. Yeah. But like all that nonsense. After all that happened, like I went through like a, a lot of shit in my own head. Cause it was, it was a big, uh, big ordeal, but, but anyways, I started seeing a psychologist cause okay. I, I, I just, I decided that, you know what? I train my body so much. I take such good care of my body. Like I neglected my brain. So I, I started like going in to see a psychologist and started learning about my own mind and stuff like that. And like the shit that I figured out, it was, it was mind blowing. And like, I think that, that, that might've helped me too with this, this weird new composure about fighting. I would guess so. That you you seem more calm than normal. Yeah, and I'm and I'm always, and I'm and I'm like this inspiring, which is which is different. Hmm. Right. In, in my last fight, in my last fight, I, I like I started off pretty emotional. Like, yeah, I'm sure uh, that fight against Silvera Lewis, but like, oh, yeah. once, once I got into the fifth round, I, then it didn't. I just kind of relaxed, and then you got to see the best of me for fifth and sixth, and boom, it was over. I really enjoyed seeing that fight go past three rounds. It was fun. Like it was, it was a lot of fun. Was, and it, and I'm glad that 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 you and everyone else got to see that I'm capable of going past three rounds. That's what I wanted to see. I was like, okay, oh four, okay, what's gonna happen? Five, and then six. I was like, oh fuck, man, we got something. Yeah, it was, and it was, it was very, uh, it was competitive too. Like it was, a, it was a, fuck, it was a tough fight. The guy was huge. Like he, he didn't, uh, he didn't fold. When very, I hit him. He's very skilled too. Very skillful boxer. Yeah, he knew how to, to take the to teach not all of it, but he knew how to take some of the power away enough to to survive. Yeah, you know, and like, and he hit me back. He wasn't afraid to crack back when he was hurt. It was good. It was a real. It was a real good fight. Good learning fight. Did he hit hard? He hit. He hit hard enough. Like he, like anybody over two hundred pounds. So, something I'm starting to notice now is um, everybody can punch. That that's the thing. Like every everybody can punch, and everybody's everybody's got some weight behind their punch. Yeah. There's there's no there's no like for me there's no noticeably difference. Nothing massive. I had that one fight with that Russian guy Kateg. Yeah. That's the only guy I can think of that really had a noticeable difference in power. The rest of them, it's it's always it's always like they all hit hard. Uh, you've done rounds with Dylan Carmen. He hits hard. He hits hard. He does yeah. hit hard. Very hard. Like all these guys hit hard. Yeah. You know, they all hit hard. The, the, there's punches out there that are annoying. There's ones that are clubbing, and there's ones that piss you off. Yes. I always found. And there's, and there's the ones you don't see. Those are the ones that usually get you. So that's the one that's going to knock me out one day. You don't. I'm not going to see it. Yeah. If I see it, I can take it. Yeah, and and it doesn't matter what it is, and it doesn't matter who's throwing it. Simon Keen, massive guy. Dylan Carmen, massive guy. These guys hit me with inspiring and in fights. <laughs> Everything they had on the chin. Nothing did not because I can see it. Yeah, but Stan Cermax had had an amateur fight with him, and he caught me with a right hand that I didn't see, and that that did that that wobbled me a little bit. Because you don't know it's coming, right? It, it's the it's one thing to get hit, hit by a car when you see it coming, and then when it hits you in the back. 
Oh, man, it's uh, it's that's what fucks you. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know it's coming. There's always punches that piss me off. And they, you ever fought a guy that had push punches? Like he would push his punch. Yeah, yeah. I fucking hate those. Usually, big, big, big guys. Like I find that that have that kind of power. Pushy, pushy punches. That you just like he hit you, and then push you. <laughs> and you go, you kind of go back on your feet a little bit. Yeah, I didn't like it. it pissed me off. There was actually, yeah, there was actually moments in my last fight where he would throw that kind of power too, where it was like pushing power, and you could see me kind of go back a little bit a couple yeah. times. I I, th- I thought it might have hit you in the chest a couple times. I think so, yeah. And there was a couple that hit me right square on the pipe because I was working on my. Yeah, I like uh, that. That was good. And he got me a couple times where I where I, I didn't really slip. I yeah. just kind of came straight in, relying on this, and he he, caught, he kind of figured it out a little bit. And I think that pushed me back a couple times. Did you get a chance to talk to him after the fight? Yeah, but he was slurring a lot. I was going to ask really you, is he okay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I got to give him credit, man. He took some bombs. He did, and 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 uh, I remember, um, I remember the fifth round. I knocked him out at the end of the fifth round. Not out cold, but he was knocked. The fight was over. I hit him with a left hook to the body. I come up with a left hook to the head. The, the left hook to the head landed, and then I threw a right hand. He, but he was already on the way down, and my and I hooked him with my the inside of my arm, and that kind of like launched him into the canvas. Yeah. But the left hook to the head got him. Yeah. And the bell rang as soon as this this the right hand went, and the referee said no knockdown. But he was like, he was fucked, and I knew it. And I remember walking back to the corner, and I was like, it's over. And I was, and then Stevie's like putting the stool in. He's like, no, no, it's not over yet. And I'm like, this fucking guy getting back up. <laughs> and then he, and he got back up, and like, I remember thinking in my head, like, okay, let's just get this over with, right? And he and Stevie said to him, like, get him out of there, and. uh I hit him so many times in that sixth round, like with bombs. It's it, this is what shocked, but blew my mind is I hit him so hard and he was still there. Literally, the the punch that I knocked him out with, yeah. I threw no power on it. I come in low with, and I just threw my right hand and it hit him in the chin and I just literally just nothing behind it. I just threw it because I was trying to set up a left hook and yeah. it hit him and knocked him out. The, the one that I didn't put nothing on accumulation of damage that's all that is that's what the accumulation so i was a little bit concerned because i remember he went the way he went down the way he hit the canvas and he wasn't moving yeah and i went back and as i was walking back to the corner the first thing i said to steve i was like i think i killed him i was like i think he's dead (laughs) he's like sweet relax he's like the doctors are gonna get him get him woken up and stuff because he was out for a while right well, we, we've seen it happen in the ring in Canada. David Whittam, Tim Hag, just tough guys taking yeah. too many shots. And the, something's got to give. Then they get it. Then they get punched out and they don't wake up, right? That's That That was my concern. I was like, I, I don't know if this guy's going to wake up because what he just took. And so, you have to give the guy respect, too. He took the fight on short notice. Tough motherfucker. Real badass. Real badass. And, and wanted his belt back. Yeah, that's his old. He that was his old belt, and this young kid had it. And he was like, "I'm on my fucking belt," <laughs> you know. Like, and he and it was. Uh, they say every fighter got the last one good fight left in them, and I think that was his. That was his last hoorah. Wow, good for him. I I hope he goes on and is successful in life and doesn't have any damage that's gonna prevent him. I just hope I don't go into a Walmart in Quebec and he's the greeter or something like that. That'd be terrible. <laughs> oh, that would be bad, yeah. But no, great, great fighter, and like, and I had so much respect for him going into it. Nothing bad to say about him. Nothing bad after. It's just like nothing but respect. That was a guy that I used to watch when I was coming up. Like, wow, you know what I mean? I'd love to be Canadian champion someday. Tough, tough guy. I hope he does well in life. Um, yeah. What the fuck else was I going to ask you? I can't remember now. I'm drawing a fucking blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you got you got sponsors for this fight. Yeah, um, so I just uh, I just got a new sponsor, um, Bernard Fisheries. So Ashton Bernard, he's a buddy of mine. Uh, he uh, he used to play for the uh, Cape Breton Screaming Eagles, the the hockey team in Cape Breton. There's been a few guys drafted to the NHL from there, but he was a fighter for the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. 
Uh, he's a First Nations guy, and this guy could fight. And I used to I used to watch him fighting. This is before I got into boxing, going to the Screaming Eagles games and watching <laughs> him. You knew every every hockey game, Ashton was fighting, right? So, anyways, he uh, he retired from hockey and he ended up now he's uh, he's running a fishing boat. And he sponsored me, the the crew, Ashton, so Bernard Fisheries. I got to give a shout out to him. He sponsored this camp. And then another shout out to uh, O'Coin's Renovation. That that's one. That's a sponsor I had since I think since my pro debut. They they've been they've been involved. So he he just jumped in for for a sponsor too. And uh, got to give him a shout out. He's going to be. Uh, also a sponsor for, like for the rest of my career i'm pretty sure so big cool. shout out to him fantastic yeah and okay. that's so so just them two that's it we got to get you sponsored by bass pro shops i think that'd be a good one get, send me a freaking send me a seiko or something to, <laughs> or something like that that's all i need <laughs> <laughs> um what's the gun of choice this year for hunting uh so I got I got rid of a lot of guns when when I got when I got my uh, I sold sold some guns and all I'm down to now is my great great grandfather's World War II 303 and it's an old it's um so you know how they were all sporterized yeah like well most of them are sporterized now this one looks sporterized but it was actually built like that because it was used they used to put them in the fighter jets as a backup gun in case the plane went down, it was used as a survival rifle, so it's reached short. So it's kind of interesting, little three hundred three. But anyway, that's that's my that's just the old trusty three hundred three. That's the only one you got left. That's it, and then I got uh, just like an old twenty two and stuff. But I'm just gonna use the old three hundred three. <laughs> Fuck me, you had a good collection before. I did. I had a good collection, but life happens, and I sold them all. <laughs> Start again, I guess. No, you know what? I think I think I'm gonna just use the old 303. Really? Unless I get a sponsor from the like Bath Pro Shop or something or Cabela's. That'd be sick. That would be sick. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a baby there's a baby on the way now and like you know, I can't I can't be spending money on wep- on guns when I got a gun that can do the job. You know what I mean? I am very excited to see what changes when you when you have your daughter. Well, she's not here yet. And right now, in my mind, the Silta car is trying to take food from her. And, like, I'm going to hurt that. I want, like, maybe I'll lose, maybe I'll get knocked out. But in my mind, I want to hurt that motherfucker. Well, you can emulate Jade, uh, emulate James J. Braddock this one. You're fighting for milk. Fighting for milk. That's it. Fighting for baby food. Uh, let's wrap this fucking thing up. I'll get you out of here. It's got to be after midnight there. And you probably got food to eat or Netflix got to some. watch or maybe call your girlfriend on the phone see what's up. Make sure she's doing all right. Um, guys, September 11th, Ryan Riziki, are you going to be defending the silver title? Yeah, but you might as well just call it the full international belt now because I defended it so many times against great, real good fighters. It's, it's got more... It's got more uh, credentials behind it than probably the world title at this point. <laughs> uh, also, what is your Instagram handle? Uh, Ryan underscore Rosicki, I think. I think that's what it is. Guys, go follow Ryan and watch his stories because you've been cracking me up lately with your Instagram stories. There's some funny shit on there. There's some good boxing stuff on there, some slow-mos. You guys can see see the some of the shots that have put so, uh, a few of these 13 guys that Ryan put down to rest. You can see it on his Instagram story. The funny Tim Hortons jokes. The fuck <laughs> be killing me with those lately. People get caught right off guard. <laughs> They're like, what? This guy's got some dude. It's so funny. But uh, guys, September 11th, Ryan Rizicki goes back in the ring again to defend his belt. Also on the card, Brandon Brewer, Jake Dow. Who else is on there? There's a female fight too. There's a female fight too. I don't know, but it's going to be a good one. <laughs> you got anybody else you want to thank today? I'll just thank my promoters for putting on this card because it's not easy right now during this pandemic, and it's a nightmare trying to apparently try. Well, I'm not a promoter, but 
from what I hear, it's a nightmare trying to it's put it on, put this card on with, with the pandemic going on, COVID and all that. So hats off to them for, for making this happen. And then thanks to my coaches for freaking getting me ready. Thanks to my woman for putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hopefully your girlfriend's all right with the pregnancy. Let me know what happens with all that. But before that happens, September 11th, guys, check it out. Going to be a live stream or a pay-per-view somewhere. Folks, that's the final shot.